Hello Sigmas. In today's problem, we have a block of mass small m, and this block of mass small m is attached to a tape. So this is a tape, and the tape goes around the pulley. So here we have a pulley, and on the other side of the pulley we have a disc. And as you can see, the tape is wrapped around the disc. And hence, what will happen if I let go of the mass of small m and if I let go of the mass capital M simultaneously? Obviously, the tape around the disc is going to get unwrapped. And hence, what is going to happen is the disc is going to roll. But under gravity, it is going to fall vertically downwards, and hence the disc will have both a translational acceleration or a linear acceleration capital A, as well as it is going to have a angular acceleration alpha. Whereas the block of mass small m is going to have only a linear acceleration small a, and uh, these are exactly the quantities that we want to find in today's video. We want to find if I let go of the system, then what is going to be the acceleration of the mass small m? What is going to be small a? What is going to be capital A? And what is going to be the angular acceleration of the disk, which is alpha? What are going to be these quantities? Now to solve this problem, we have to go back right to the basics. The basics that we learned when we had begun this course on mechanics. To solve a problem like this one, as we have done before, you know that we need two things. First thing that we need is what is going to be the equation of motion for this system. So what are going to be the equations of motion? Since there are multiple bodies, what are going to be the equations of motion? So equations of motion for this system and the second thing that we want is what is going to be the equation of the constraint on this system so what is going to be the equation of constraint for the system now when i say equations of motion it is not only going to be the linear equations of motion as we had uh, seen earlier when we had solved the case of a pulley but it is also going to be the rotational equations of motion. Linear equation of motion involves the Newton's second law for the force and the relation of the force to the acceleration, which is f equal to m a. Similarly, we are going to have Newton's second law for rotational motion, which is nothing but torque is going to be equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So let us start solving this problem. Let us try to find what is going to be the equation of motion for the block of mass small m. Now, since uh, it is executing only linear motion, hence its equation of motion is simple. It is going to be small mg minus there is going to be some tension in the tape. So let us call it T is going to be equal to small m into small a. Similarly, we are going to get an equation of motion for the disk. That is, we are going to get an equation of motion for the linear motion of the disk. So, as you all know, we can separate the linear motion and the rotational motion for a particular body. So, let us uh, write down the equation of motion for the linear motion of the disk. So, that is simply going to be equal to capital M into G minus T is going to be equal to capital M into capital A. And what is going to be the rotational equation of motion for the disk? That is simply going to be equal to the torque, which is nothing but what is the force on this uh, disk? What is the tangential force on the disk? There is only one tangential force that is causing the rotation of the disk. Now, there is the force of gravity too, but that is not causing the rotation. As you can easily see from the figure, what is causing the rotation is the tension in the tape, right? There is some tension over here, and that tension is going to cause the rotation. And hence, we are going to get the torque is equal to tension times the perpendicular distance, which uh, let us say the radius of this disk is capital R. So it is just going to be the tension times capital R. And that is going to be equal to, as I told you, I times alpha. Now we know what the moment of inertia for the disk is. It is mr square divided by 2. 
times alpha. So one of the R is going to get cancelled on both sides. So I will get T equal to M R alpha divided by T. So we have found what the tension is. Now let us see what the equation of constraint is going to be. Let us say that the distance of this mass a small m from the axis of the pulley, this distance of the mass small m from the axis of the pulley is x, whereas the distance of the disc from the axis of the pulley is y. Let us say the pulley has a radius of a small r. Now since uh, this disc is rotating and hence unwrapping the tape around it, if Let's say it has rotated by some angular displacement theta. So it has undergone some angular displacement theta. Then you know that the tape that is going to get unwinded over here is simply going to be r times theta. That is x equal to r theta. So if the tape is unwrapping around the disc, then the length of the tape that has unwrapped is going to be equal to r times theta. And hence the equation of constraint is obviously going to be equal to x plus pi times a small r which is the radius of the pulley plus y which is the distance of the disc from the axis of the pulley is going to be equal to let us say that initially when I had not let the disc go it's a distance was some constant value from the axis of rotation. So this is obviously going to be equal to some constant which is the length of the tape before the disc has started to unwrap the tape around it. So that is going to be the constant. So this constant is nothing but the length of the tape when the disc had not even started to unwrap the tape around it plus the distance of the tape unwrapped by the disc when it starts moving. So that is what is going to be the equation of constraint. Now what I can do is I can differentiate this uh, equation throughout. I can take the second derivative uh, with respect to time throughout this equation. So that will give me x double dot plus since this is a constant. So its derivative is zero because the radius of the pulley is obviously constant. So I'm going to get x double dot plus y double dot is again the derivative of a constant is zero. Capital R is a constant and I'm going to get theta double dot and hence what I'm going to get is small a which is the x double dot which is the acceleration of this mass of small m plus capital A which is the linear acceleration of the disk is going to be equal to capital R times alpha. This is the equation of constraint. Now what I can do is I can substitute this R times alpha over here in the equation for the tension and I will get T is equal to it was M by 2 and R alpha I can write as A plus capital A. And now what I can do is I can substitute this equation for the tension in let's say equation number 1 and equation number 2. Let us call this equation number 1 and equation number 2. So I can substitute that uh, equation for tension in equation number 1 and equation number 2. What will I get if I do that? I will get mg minus the tension which is uh, nothing but capital M by 2 small a plus capital A is going to be equal to small m times small a and Another equation I'm going to get is this is the equation number two. So equation number two is going to become capital M into G minus again the tension. So capital M divided by two small a plus capital A is going to be equal to capital M times capital A. Now as you can see these are two equations in two variables. The variables over here is small a and capital A. So I have two equations and two variables so you can solve them by elimination to get what capital A and small a are going to be. So let us do that. First let me open up the brackets. Now I would highly motivate you to skip this that is do not uh, see the solution. In fact uh, try to eliminate the variables and uh, solve for the variables uh, themselves. So that is try to eliminate capital A and then solve for small a or try to eliminate small a and solve for capital A on your own instead of looking at my solution. So try to solve for small a and capital A on your own and then you can verify whether your answer matches mine. So when you open up the bracket for this let us say equation number 3 and let us call this equation number 4. So if I open up the brackets for equation number 3 what am I going to get small m minus capital M into small a divided by 2 minus capital M 
into capital A divided by 2 is equal to small m into small a. Now I can solve for capital A from this equation. Solving for capital A, I will get capital M into A divided by 2 is equal to small m into g minus capital M into small a divided by 2 minus small m into a. If I open up the brackets for equation number 4, what will I get? I will get mg minus, I will get again the same thing, capital M divided by 2 times the small a minus capital M capital A divided by 2 is going to be equal to capital M into capital A. Now what I can do is I can substitute capital M into capital A from over here in this equation. Doing that I will get mg minus capital M into small a divided by 2 minus I will get that expression. So I will get mg minus ma divided by 2 minus small m into a is going to be equal to I am going to substitute this again from over here. So I will get 2 mg minus ma minus small m into a. Okay, so now as you can see this equation is completely in terms of small a and hence I can solve for small a from this equation. So let me take small a on one side and g on the other side. Now as you can see this capital M A divided by 2 and this capital M A divided by 2 are going to get cancelled and I'll be left with small m into A and these two are going to go on the other side. So I will get plus small m into A minus capital M into A. Oh no, this is also going to become positive because there was a negative sign over here and it will be equal to 2mg minus mg or it is going to be plus mg because there was a negative sign over here. So the mg is going to become plus and you are going to get minus capital M into g. Okay, so you are going to get a as from this 3m minus capital M divided by 2m plus capital M into g. So that is what is going to be your small a. Now what I can do is I can substitute this small a into one of those equation 3 or 4 and I can get capital A. So which equation should I substitute that into? Let us substitute it in this equation because there is only a single small a over here. So I am going to get mg minus capital M by 2 into small a which is nothing but 3 times small m minus capital M divided by 2 times small m plus capital M into g and then I had a minus capital M into capital A divided by 2 is going to be equal to capital M into capital A. Now I can take this on the other side and then I will get 3 by 2 capital M into capital A is equal to capital M into g minus half times capital M into G, 3 times small m minus capital M divided by 2 times small m plus capital M. Now as you can see capital M gets cancelled throughout and you are going to get capital A is equal to 2 by 3 G minus G by 3 into 3 times cap small m minus capital M divided by 2 times small m plus capital M. That is what is going to be your capital A which is the linear acceleration of the disk. Now since we have found both capital A as well as small a, now we can substitute both of these in this equation. So as you can see from over here, alpha is nothing but 1 by r, let me change the color. So alpha is equal to 1 by r small a plus capital A and we have found both. We have found small a as well as capital A. All you have to do is you have to substitute small a and capital A in this equation and you can easily find alpha. That is something that I will leave for you to do as a homework. Substitute small a and capital A over here and find what alpha is going to be. And with that we have found all the three quantities that were required in this problem. Small a, capital A and alpha. And with this, our course on mechanics is complete. Congratulations everyone, our course on mechanics is complete. And now I shall begin with a new course, which is a course on electrodynamics. 
as well as uh, I am going to begin with a mathematical physics course on my channel on mathematical physics, which you can easily find in the home page of my YouTube channel. So once you visit the home page of my YouTube channel, you will easily find the link to my mathematical physics YouTube channel. So you can go there and uh, check out my mathematical physics videos. And over here, we are going to discuss pure physics videos only. So if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you have any queries, then leave them in the comments and do share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching.